Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a much requested video and one that I am very excited about and that is an author spotlight of Ann Patchett. So I have been a pretty big fan of Ann Patchett for a while now. I think that it was 2006 or 2007 when I first heard about her. A friend of mine lent me a copy of The Bel Canto and it actually took me a while to read it after she gave me that book, but once I did, I was totally hooked. I, I'm i surprised it took me as long as it did to read all of her fiction books, but I knew from the moment I finished Bel Canto that I wanted to read the rest of her fiction because she is just a phenomenal writer. She does such a good job with character development and I don't know, I just, I, I'm a big fan, if you cannot tell. <laughs> So I'm going to be sharing all of my thoughts on Ann Patchett's novels. Um, I haven't read any of her nonfiction, so maybe down the road, once I do read all of her nonfiction, I'll do a separate video on that, but this is just about her fiction works. Um, I'm going to start with the first one I read and then go from there. So obviously the first one I read was The Bel Canto, and this was lent to me by my friend, like I said, who spoke very highly of it. She said it was beautiful and she really wanted me to read it because she thought that I would love it. And I did love it. Um, obviously, that's where my love of Ann Patchett started. And this book is about a group of people who are attending a birthday party for a very important businessman that is held at the vice president of a particular um, South African country. I'm not sure if it ever says what country. I don't remember. It's been quite a while since I read this. Um, but they invite this opera singer to sing because the businessman is its his favorite opera singer and it was the way they knew they'd get him there and so it's this amazing party and it's a wonderful night and everything's going so well and then the party is taken hostage by a band of um, terrorists and it the the book follows sort of what unfolds and it's, it's terrifying at first because you don't know what's going on and they don't know what's going on and they're afraid for their lives and it ends up developing into this wonder, wonderful story about the relationships that are formed by people who don't know each other and you, I don't, it's not a spoiler that the, um, the terrorists, that many of them are children and so you it's sort of, you you question what, you know, who's the real bad guy here, and you form attachments to characters you probably wouldn't if circumstances were different, and it's just incredible. The relationships that are built, and, you know, the, the, the terrible things that go on, but the beautiful things that go on, it's it's fascinating and you follow it to its culmination you know when when the situation resolves and the ending is it still gets me a little choked up and it's been a while since I read it so it's one of those books that all the way to the end it just has your attention and it's beautifully written and the characters are incredible and if you're going to read Ann Patchett start with this one I, I love her books, but this is by far her best work. So the next book that I read was The Magician's Assistant, and I hadn't heard anything about it, but I was like, ooh, Magician's Assistant, this seems like something that's going to be really interesting. And The Magician's Assistant is a story of a girl named Sabine, who is, she has been married to this magician for 20 years and she's his assistant and suddenly he dies. And so it's dealing with the aftermath of that when she finds out that though she was told by him that his family died in a tragic accident, in fact they are very much alive and well and she ends up, his mother comes out to LA and it's sort of an awkward situation because you know, they aren't acquainted at all and they don't know anything about each other's lives. And so Sabine takes her around LA and shows her the different places that were important in Percival's life. And she takes him, takes her to Percival's grave and they, they sort of strike up a, a friendship, sort of, um, if I recall. It has been quite a while since I read this one as well. And 
well, it wasn't my favorite, so I don't, I didn't really file away as much information about this one. Um, but after the mom leaves, she, Sabine feels really lonely, and she ends up going out to Nebraska, where Percival is, was born and raised, and meeting the rest of his family, and she starts to piece together this life of this man that she loved, and meanwhile, she's having all these different dreams in which Percival and Fawn, who is Percival's lover, because Percival's actually gay, and they are, and while Sabine and Percival are married, it's kind of an interesting situation, um, which gets explored in the book. Um, it's not a spoiler that Percival's gay and that Fawn is his lover, because I believe that's in the first or second chapter. Um, but she's visited in these dreams by both of them who are comforting and encouraging her through this. Um, and it, while the characters themselves were really great and well-developed and relatable and just wonderful, because that's something that Anne Patchett does very well, is character creation, the, th the story itself was sort of flat for me. I never felt super invested in the story and it took me a while to read it and I just felt like it was dry and boring which surprised me especially after reading the bel canto and so I didn't love this one and it's probably I mean I wouldn't recommend it really at all I think I gave it three stars just because the characters are great but I don't know. The ending itself I didn't like either and it just it it felt rushed near the end and I just was not a fan of this book. So the next book that I read by her was Patron Saint of Liars and again I don't remember a ton about this one and this is probably the book I remember the least about um, but it follows a girl named Rose who is pregnant but not unwed who goes and stays at an unwed mother home, mother's home in Kentucky to deliver her baby because she doesn't feel like she can be the mother that it needs. And she has every intention of giving up her child and it follows her journey there. It's set in the 1960s and it has, it's, it's told in four separate parts. So the first part is like sort of a prologue in that it talks about the history of the home that is, uh, I think it's called St. Elizabeth's, uh, which is the unwed mother's home. Uh, it tells the history of that and you find out that, that it was initially a hotel for guests to stay at visiting a health springs that is on the property that has since dried up and disappeared. The second part is Rose's story and it's from Rose's perspective and we find out you know, why she left California, her reasoning for leaving her family behind to go to this this home in Kentucky to give up her child and we it follows the the things that she learns there and the decisions that she makes and what ultimately happens when she does give birth to her child and then it moves on to two other perspectives um, that I don't want to give too much information about because I feel like that would give spoilers. Uh, the first is Sun, um, who's a, like a maintenance worker, housekeeper, uh, groundskeeper at, at the unwed mother's home. And the last one is Sissy, who is the child of Rose. So we get those two, and each of those is told by the perspective of that person. And so we get more information on the story from those two and it's it's really interesting I like that it's told like that and I enjoyed that about it um I remember that I wasn't the biggest fan of Rose I thought that she was a very selfish and cold person and I thought that while there were some likable things about her and I didn't absolutely hate her and I just didn't think that she was a wonderful character like I I wasn't hugely attached to her but overall I thought that it was a wonderful and beautiful story with a lot of you know life lessons about making tough decisions and the consequences of those decisions and I, it's probably my third favorite of, of Anne's novels and I I think that it is also a really good place to start if you want to read her books um, I would definitely recommend it as a, a starting point if you don't want to start with Bel Canto. 
So fast forward several years and I found State of Wonder. So by the time that I realized that she had put out a new novel, it had been out for probably three years, but as soon as I heard about it, I went and ran and picked it up and I was so excited to read it. It had gotten a lot of buzz, a lot like the Bel Canto, and so that made it even more exciting for me to read. And it was magical. Like, it brought me straight back to how much I loved the Bel Canto, and I was so excited, and it was what gave me, what made me go, oh, you know, there's all these, these, there's other two books of hers that I haven't read yet, and I want to grab those, and I want to read them, and I want to make sure I've read everything of hers, because State of Wonder was just so good. So State of Wonder follows a woman named Marina, who is a scientist in a university lab, I believe. They work for... They're working for a drug corporation or something like that. I know it has something to do with a drug corporation, um, but her coworker has been sent to South, South America to locate this, you know, elusive doctor who is doing research in Brazil, in the Amazon, and she's supposed to be working on this, like, miracle drug, but she's very hard to get a hold of, and they they want to bring her back, and so her coworker is sent down there to do that. However, they soon find out that he has passed away. And so when Marina finds out, she goes to tell his wife and children, and while she's there, the wife tells, or makes her agree to go and find out what happened to him and to bring his body back because she doesn't want him to, to be buried there. She wants him to be buried at home. And so Marina agrees and she's sent down to uh, South America to find this elusive doctor who is hard to find and only comes back to the city every once in a while. And so she does eventually locate her and she heads down to the Amazon with her and that's where the real magic starts because the setting is so beautifully described and it's just something that, you know, I've never personally seen, but it was like I could see it. It was amazing. And you, several of the characters are just so wonderful. Um, the, the sort of young boy who's like her guide, he doesn't speak, he is... Oh, he was one of my favorite. He was wonderful and lovable and just, yeah, the best. He's probably my favorite character in the whole book. Um, so they go down there and she, you know, she has in her mind she's going to find out what happened to him. She's going to bring this doctor back. She's going to bring back information. But that's not really what happens. And it, it sort of follows her journey as she learns about the research this woman is doing. And she sort of, you know, gets involved and there aren't a lot of answers about what happened to him. She finds his letters and um, she starts to sort of piece together some stuff that happened and it's fascinating. And I, I don't want to say any more because I don't want to spoil anything, but it's really, it's just awesome. Like the local people that they are studying is, they're, they're so interesting and I just thought that it was a well-done book and something that was very different from anything I've ever read before and yeah. It's also another great place to start with her novels. Um, it's it's right up there with Belcanto. It's uh, Belcanto probably edges it out a little bit but State of Wonder was was one of my favorite books I read the year that I read it, if not my favorite book I read that year. So I definitely, definitely recommend it. It's, it's incredible. And the next one that I read was Run. And this one is a little, I don't know. It was better than Magician's Assistant, but it still wasn't something that had me super engaged in the book. So the story of Run is, is about two different families and and sort of about how that they end up meshed together in this in this weird turn of circumstances. And the first family we meet are the Doyles, and um, Bernard Doyle is the husband, and his wife really, really wants kids, but it turns out she can't actually have kids, and so they end up adopting. And they adopt one uh, little boy, and then the mother uh, 
connects with the adoption agency and says, I want that same family to raise my other son. And so they end up um, with both of the little boys. The second son is actually the older son. So he has lived with his, his mom for a little while um, before she ends up giving him up for adoption. And that creates an interesting dynamic between within that whole family structure. But so their mother, the um, their adoptive mother, passes away, and they don't really know anything about their their biological mother, and they've never really wanted to know anything because they loved their mother, and they don't actually have a lot in common with their dad, and so it's an interesting family dynamic in that they sort of do what he says because he's their dad, and, and he's super interested in politics, and neither of them really are at all, and so it's sort of this interesting push-and-shove relationship. And then you have, um, I can't remember the woman's name, um, you have this mother and her, the single mother and her daughter, Kenya, who, um, they go to a lot of these political lectures that the Doyles go to because Kenya's mother loves politics, and Kenya loves politics. And the book is called Run because Kenya also runs a lot, and that comes into play in the book in different ways. But so they, these two families collide on this night of this Jesse Jackson le lecture because they're both there and Teddy and Bernard have an argument. Teddy is the younger son. They have an argument and he goes to walk off in this big snowstorm and doesn't see this car coming and Kenya's mother tackles him out of the way and Kenya's mother is very injured. She's hit by the car. She ends up in the hospital. And when the ambulance drives away, they leave Kenya behind. And so the Doyles end up taking Kenya in, and they, and we, we learn that while the Doyles don't know Kenya, Kenya knows the Doyles. And this is sort of the story of how we find out the different ways that these two families are intertwined, and just sort of things about both families' lives over the years. And it's really interesting, and there were a couple of, of twists in there that I didn't expect. Um, some that I did, but I thought that it was really well done, and the the characters are, are again, fantastic. I, if I say nothing else in this video, it's that Ann Patchett knows how to develop a character, and this is no exception. And I really enjoyed reading this. It was, again, not my favorite. I thought that it was a little bland, like it... It was interesting and I liked learning about the families and I like a story about families, but I didn't find it exciting in the same way that I found some of her other books exciting. But I do think that it is worth the read. So the last book of hers that I read was Taft and it took me quite a while to get to this one. I had had it on my shelf for years before I got to it and this one is um, the story of a man named John Nickel and John Nickel is an ex-jazz musician who is now managing a bar and one day this girl named Faye walks into the bar looking for a job and he hires her and the story sort of unfolds from there we learn about John Nickel and his life choices um, he has a child and we learn about you know some of the things he would wish he'd done differently and things like that and and about his relationship with his child and the mother of his child and and that whole family dynamic but at the same time we learn that Faye and her brother Carl who are new to Memphis because this takes place in Memphis um, we learn that their father has passed away and John sort of becomes really interested in in the story of Taft who is their their dad um, and the story is told in two different ways so they tell the present day story about what's happening in John Nichols life and like the things that happened because of his association with Faye and her brother Carl and the things that happened with his son and that kind of thing but it also tells a side story that is from my understanding John's like him piecing together what happened back in Coalfield, Tennessee, in East Tennessee, where Faye and Carl are from. And he starts to sort of put together this story about their dad's life, which turns out to sort of be 
the story leading up to the point where he dies and then they move to Memphis. And I, I liked that. I really, really liked that way of telling the story because coming into it, I wondered, you know, what, what happened to their dad? Like, why are they here? What happened to their dad? And I liked that it was sort of like we were in the present, but we were hearing pieces of that story. So, like, we, you know, the present day circumstances are, are leading up to something, but we know that that flashback sort of story is leading up to Taft's death. And it becomes this this really wonderful picture of what can happen to different people during grief. So like the choices that Faye makes versus the choices that her brother Carl makes versus the choices that her mom makes and that kind of thing. And so it was really interesting sort of lesson in choices in life and how people deal with grief and things like that. So I thought that it was a really interesting and worthwhile story and I liked it. Um, probably not where I would start if I'm gonna start with Ann Patchett. I want to say it's the shortest of her novels but um, it's not the most engaging read for sure. It, it was good and I liked it and there were some very quick reading parts and some very engaging parts. But there were also some parts where I just was like what are these characters doing? And I wanted to just shake them because I just I just thought they were making the poorest decisions ever. But they were real decisions. They were decisions that any sane person might make in that situation. So I, I appreciated that. And I always appreciate that about Ann Patchett's writing is that she is very true to real life and her characters are characters that could live in our world and could make choices every day that they make in those books. And I think that's a huge part of what is so wonderful about her writing is that she writes about real people and she creates characters that you feel like you could know. And I, not all authors are good at that. And that's something that I personally love in a book is characters that I feel like I could know and be friends with or know and really hate and things like that. All right, so that is it for her fiction novels, and I hope that you enjoyed hearing a little bit about them from my perspective. I know it's a little scattered, and some of them I don't totally remember, um, but it's probably enough to give you to to make you decide whether or not it's something that is for you. Um, if you're going, if you're wondering where you should start, I there are three choices that I would go with: either the Bel Canto. Um, State of Wonder or Patron Saint of Liars. Those I think are her strongest books and obviously in my opinion Bel Canto is the best place to start but if you're not ready for something that is probably going to be slightly disturbing and definitely an emotional roller coaster then I would say start with State of Wonder or Patron Saint of Liars. Um, I, I tend to think that State of Wonder is a little stronger than Patron Saint of Liars but I think they all definitely have their you know, great reasons for being starting point books. And again, if there's one that I would skip out of the whole bunch, it's definitely The Magician's Assistant. I just think that it is the slowest and least interesting of all of her books, but it still had its merit and I'm glad that I did read it. All right, so that is it. And if you have any questions about any of the books in particular, definitely leave them in the comments and I will answer them. Um, if you've read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments, but if you're going to write anything spoilerly, make sure that you say something very obvious that there are spoilers because I tried to steer clear of spoilers for all of these books because I know that um, a lot of you have not read any of these and I didn't want to give anything away, any of the great wonderful twists. But um, if you, you know, want to have a spoiler discussion, feel free to contact me on Goodreads or, you know, on DM me on Twitter or send me an email because I would love to talk about any of her books. Um, yeah, that is about it. I hope that you are enjoying your week. And if you end up picking up one of these books, let me know because I would love to, I would love to know if I inspired any of you to read Ann Patchett's books. All right, well, I will see you guys next time. Bye!